have is the full range of the kinds of tools made by uh, cavemen, by, by Neanderthals. These would be found anywhere from about 35,000 years ago to about 200,000. And they're uh, really a very simple set of tools. They're stone spear points. And that's stick on the end of a stick, and then you find something big that you want to eat, and you poke it a lot and hope it doesn't kill you. <laughs> because they, they, these, are, these are large and dangerous animals. Uh, but then you have to butcher the thing, you have to cut it up. So they'll use a chip, and these chips, when you remove them from the core, that, just feel very carefully through that edge. That's a real sharp edge. It's as sharp as anything, in fact, sharper than the stuff that we made today. Sharpest edge of nature. And you blunt, deliberately blunt one side of the, uh, uh, of the plate, and then you can press really hard. And, um, and that's a knife. That's a knife, exactly. Um, that's exactly right. Uh, this thing is used to shape wood. So if you're working uh, on, if you want to sharpen a piece of wood, you use this like a uh, push plank. And, and notice it doesn't work really fast, but then again, cavemen had all the time in the world. There's no television to watch, so you can sit, you can sit around and take hours and hours to shave down a, a spear shaft like this. Um, and that's actually used as a saw or a shredding tool. It's got what they did was they took the chip and uh, struck off a series of small chips, separated a little bit, so it produces teeth in between. Yeah. And you can use it. These actually are very good for butchering. These these you know, they're called denticulates. They catch onto the meat a little bit better, so they're actually very efficient. Uh, now that that's interesting because that's actually a waste product. To make these nice flakes with the sharp edges, they had to carefully prepare a piece of rock. Now this is the absolute first part of the stage of the process. This is a, a piece of flint, and I took a hammer stone and found a flat surface on it near the edge and whacked it like so. And the impact from that, the shock wave from the impact, traveled through the stone in this pattern. It's exactly the way glass breaks. As a matter of fact, the only types of rock where this will work are chemically indistinguishable from glass. This is SiO2, silicon dioxide. The only reason it's not translucent is it's got impurities. It would be like that window glass. And you know how glass breaks with sharp edges? Okay. So, uh, what they would do to produce a flake like this is they would very, very carefully prepare Here's my example. Prepare a core by striking off a whole bunch of flakes to produce a smooth dome surface. The, they then prepare the edge to be exactly 70 degrees and strike it and off would come one of these thin chips. And they could do this multiple times. This is actually yeah. multiple ones. Struck off so the chip. So off of one rock yeah. they could get. Yeah. Hey, but what is this used for? That's actually thrown away at the end of the process. So he's showing you how you I'm get showing, to showing that. How, how, how you get to it. You rework the platform, strike it again, and then off comes the chip. And the crucial thing is you can determine the shape of the chip by the shape of the core. I used a round, produced a round core. I got a round plate. Like these are a couple of real, those are real examples. These are all over 120,000 years old. Oh my gosh. That's real stuff. You don't think? Uh, those are all replicas I mean, This is real. You want to handle that. That was actually made by something that looked like this uh, a very long time ago. And if you want to make a spear point, you make a triangular one and then strike it. And that gives you these nice triangular... Is this the same thing as this? Like, they both use the Yep, thing? exactly. And Don't touch that. No, that's, that's alright. This stuff, I'm happy to have people okay. touch. I'm, I'm, the one thing I'm edgy about is this one because the edges are so sharp. These, these are absolutely deadly sharp edges. Um, but those are fairly, yeah, exactly. They're, 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 they're fairly um, sharp, but still, the kinds of weapons they're using are basically stabbing spears. This one is sharp too, because so, it's a knife. Yeah, so Neanderthals have to be extremely strong. And we can actually see anatomical evidence of that. This is a leg bone. And a, a modern human leg bone, like yours, would be more or less straight. Mm -hmm shaft would be straight. This is bowed, and for years they thought this was the result of, of a pathology of a disease called rickets. 
they now know that this is simply an accommodation for a huge bicep muscle. And this wide line right here is where that muscle actually inserts onto uh -huh. the bone. And it's called linea aspera. And that's double the width of linea aspera on modern human bones. And if you x-ray this bone and determine the bone density from x-rays, we have twice the bone density as modern humans. And bone density responds to muscular stress. This is why elderly people get uh, osteoporosis. They're putting no stress on their bones. The bone mineral resorbs and their bones get brittle. Okay. Neanderthals are putting tremendous amount of muscular stress on their bones. And so the bone densities in Neanderthals are equal to or exceed the bone densities on the most highly trained, steroid pumped up, professional weight athletes like weightlifters, really? football players. Uh, these people are extremely powerful. You see a lot of evidence too, there's a lot of sort of heavy locomotion indicated by the fact that joint surfaces are quite a bit bigger than Neanderthals. Although in terms of stature, they're not giants. Neanderthal, average Neanderthals on the bottom is tall, short, very stocky, they are part in part their body proportions are adapted to retain heat because they're living in cold climates uh, with relatively minimal clothing. Not not sewn clothing, but probably laced clothing that right. wasn't really very airtight. So that's why they were so yeah. hairy. Yeah. Well, we, had, we really don't know about the hair part. And you can never tell about prehistoric people. Uh, but they, they probably had big beards. And it's possible they had read some, one of the genetic studies of Neanderthals suggests that one of the few easily recognizable Neanderthal genes that's present today is the red hair gene. The red hair gene? The red hair Really? Is, so if you're looking at redheads, you're looking at people with some Neanderthal heritage. Oh my Mine and yeah, my family is originally from Western France, so that would be it. I've got absolutely straight nasal bones, and that's take a look at the at the real high straight bridge. Uh -huh. That's probably a Neanderthal older 